The next video in this series is all about how we update Dalton's atomic theory and uh, make it more relevant and going over all of the different scientists and stuff that led to our current model of the atom. All right, there were two major revisions to um, Dalton's atomic theory. He said that all particles were uh, atoms are indivisible and that there were not different types of the same atom. So we know that now that is untrue. You obviously know about electrons, protons, and Jimmy Neutrons. <laughs> Boy genius. All right, so let's go over the history of how we have electrons and then later on we'll go over protons and neutrons in a subsequent video. All right, so first, the first thing that kind of shattered Dalton's atomic theory was the discovery of the electron. As you know, electrons are negatively charged. They were discovered by J.J. Thompson in 1897. So if Dalton is doing all this stuff in the 1700s, this was published and accepted for quite a long time. All right, so what he was doing is he was passing an electrical current through something called a cathode ray tube. And this is a picture of what he has in class. I have one and I show you. Um, and I've linked a YouTube video where you can see the cathode ray tube. And essentially all it is is a glass tube that has gas trapped inside. And then it has a conduit on this side and that side. And then you hook up an electric source and you can watch a beam of light go through. Okay, the particles get excited. So he noticed that the surface of the tube um, glows. And he noticed that when he put a magnet up to it, an opposite end attracted to the positive end and would actually bend the light. So he was, uh, you know, maybe the first light bender. So this um, shows you in a little bit more detail what's going on here. All right, so you have the negative end and positive end with your cathode and your anode, and it would have this really nice beam of light right here that goes straight. And then when he would take the uh, positive end of the magnet, the beam of light would curve up. If he flipped the magnet and put the negative end to it, the beam would curve down. And here in the notes, I linked a YouTube video where you can actually see all of that. And there's one on my website as well. So what he thought is, huh, what is up with this beam of light? These flowing negatively charged things, because we know opposites attract and we know that um, like things repel. He tried this for a variety of different gases. And guess what? Different colors of light, but they all did the same thing. So all of these particles, all of these atoms had the exact same subatomic particles. Okay, this concept is what basically led to the discovery of or the development of televisions. And old school televisions have different um, gas tubes inside with different elements. And when an electrical current um, shines with a computer, it basically turns on the red, the green, or the blue, however many pixels it has, um, whether it be uh, 720 or 1080 or um, now we're up to 4k so up to 4,000 so what it does is it just has all these teeny tiny little particles that are turned on and making a more clear picture so thank you JJ that's how uh, I spend the most of my nights is with my television so the cathode ray tube had identical properties regardless of what the element was, and that was huge. So therefore, all the elements must have electrons, and that was groundbreaking, okay? And then afterwards, Robert Millikan kind of piggybacked on top of that, and in 1909, and you don't have to know the dates, but just kind of relatively speaking, he figured out the charge to mass ratio of the electron. He figured out that electrons are 
ridiculously small. 9.109 times 10 to negative 34 uh, 31st kilograms. He also found that some atoms, well, all atoms are going to be neutral. So there has to be something positive in there to cancel it out. And because they're so small, the positive charge didn't account for the whole mass. So maybe there was something else that had mass inside. So that kind of opened up the door for the discovery of the neutron and the discovery of the proton. So the way that he did this is through um, the oil drop experiment. And our textbook doesn't really go much into it, but um, it's a relatively easy process. He used a microscope, not a telescope. So it's a good graphic, but it's mislabeled. He used a microscope and kind of like the cathode ray tube with a positive and negative end. He has this positive charge plate and negatively charged plate. He has an atomizer, a mister of oil, so that there's this teeny tiny hole here and one droplet goes through and he could figure out and calculate using a lot of physics the charge to mass ratio. And that ended up being quite unbelievable. All right, so more about the electron is that it wasn't dependent on just one type of element. It worked for any type. And if it wasn't electrified, it didn't attract or repel to the magnet. So that means there has to be something positive in there to counteract all of that. Um, so that oil drop experiment led to the size of our electrons and it pretty much still holds up today. He calculated that they were about 1 1840th the size of the positive proton that was in there. That's that 10 to the negative 31st number that you found um, on the previous slide and it pretty much with technology holds up true today. So this guy was a genius, absolutely. So how did the other subatomic particles get discovered? Okay, they were not invented. They were discovered. They are there. All right, well, Eugene Goldstein in 1885 also looked at the cathode ray tube. But what he found is that there's something traveling in the opposite direction. While you're busy looking at the light, and light electricity is electrons, he looked at it with a different kind of lens, and he found that there was positively charged particles traveling in the opposite direction. So if your electrons are flowing towards your positive um, anode away from your negative cathode, he found that there's something traveling in the opposite direction. So he called them positively charged particles, hence protons, and they are 1,840 times heavier than the electron. So really kind of amazing to notice something that wasn't there before. And by wasn't there, no one saw before. Okay, the neutron was discovered by Sir James Chadwick. And what he was working on is um, different radioactive sources. And he found that there were particles that were measured with the Geiger counter. And those particles didn't um, the conservation of mass didn't add up. And when we get to our atomic chapter, you're going to see, or our nuclear chapter, you're going to see how these numbers on top, 4 plus 9 give you 13, add up to 12 plus 1, which is 13. And these bottom numbers here, the atomic numbers add up to 6, and so do these numbers down here. So again, law of conservation of mass. And what he found is that if he bombarded um, some beryllium with these uh, alpha particles, he found that, yes, he got some carbon-12, but he had other particles as well. And those particles were our neutrons, and those neutrons have no charge, but have the same mass as a proton. And this was discovered way later.
All right, so what I would do is really become comfortable and familiar with this summary chart right here. As I tell all my students, star circle highlight this. This is super important because what it does is it really categorizes the difference between your electrons, your protons, and your neutrons. All right, your electrons are given the symbol E negative, protons are P positive, neutrons are lowercase n. Um, with the little zero up top. If it's a capital N, that's nitrogen. So capitalization really matters, all right, in chemistry. Relatively speaking, an electron is a one minus charge, a proton is a one plus charge, and neutrons, they go in for free, no charge. <laughs> all right, their relative mass to one another, a proton and a neutron weigh the same. But the mass, and this is the atomic mass unit, which we're going to get into other slides, um, is 1 1840th. So these electrons are much smaller than the proton and the neutron. The actual mass is going to be ridiculously small, 9.1 times 10 to the negative 28th grams and 10 to the 24th grams for your protons and your neutrons. So these guys are the same other than one has a charge of one, uh, one plus, and the other one has no charge whatsoever. So you'll see that it's really the electrons that are the odd man out. Okay, so knowing all of that, then we're going to go into how you can figure out how many protons, neutrons, and electrons are in each one of our atoms on the periodic table. Okay, stay tuned.